All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife, and this is the Rough Rider Reserve number RRR001. And first off, this is a new series from Rough Rider Knives and Smoky Mountain Knife Works um, that's basically a higher end version or higher end series of knives from Rough Rider. Uh, so it started out with three different knives, the 001, which is this one-armed jack. Then it had the 002, which was a kayak, which was like a, I guess, modernized or modified um, canoe pattern. And then the 003, which was a whittler. And um, I only got this one so far, uh, but I hope to do a video with the kayak also at least. Um, but what the series is, is it's a higher end, you know, knife, a uh, better fit and finish, um, better materials. Uh, for example, all of the versions, all of these first three versions had different kinds of micarta for the handle covers, and then they had D2 steel. Um, so higher end materials, and then also they won't be made, uh, with the same combination of materials and design again. So right off the bat, you can probably tell that this is Rough Rider Knives and Smoky Mountain Knife Works kind of trying to move towards and compete with the market that GEC has really cornered, which is um, short runs of knives, uh, higher end knives, and some kind of quirky patterns even. And another really clear example of the fact that this is an attempt to kind of move towards at least, if not compete in, but at least move towards that market is the packaging. So this is the how the knife comes. First of all, you've got a box, which is really normal for Rough Rider knives. Um, actually, Rough Rider knives are usually well packaged. They have um, usually come in a nice box. Sometimes it has a magnetic flap, um, has you know, a cutout specifically in the shape of the knife, and generally nice packaging. But here you see inside the box is a tube. And if you are familiar with GEC, that'll be, you know, immediately recognizable. Um, GEC has been sending knives in tubes since they, you know, first started. And it's kind of a calling card almost for GEC. The, the differences here are that this is actually a metal tube, which is honestly kind of nice. Um, the cardboard tubes are have their own kind of character and, and I like, uh, but the metal tube, they're certainly nothing wrong with it being metal and you can see it has the Rough Rider Reserve embossed on it or what it raised and then um, built by hand backed for life which is kind of their motto recently and it only opens on one side but when you open it it has a foam pretty thick foam topper and then it came wrapped in a microfiber cloth so the Rough Rider Reserve microfiber cloth and then inside the uh, microfiber cloth it had wax paper also Rough Rider Reserve branded and then the knife so uh, I kind of I described this to, to another collector as a Russian nesting doll packaging um, there's like five different layers of packaging uh, so that was kind of funny to open it up, but it is very clearly a move uh, to kind of have some of the same features as GAC knives. As GAC knives come in tubes and they have the wax paper wrapping. Um, another thing here that, that if, if you follow GAC, you might recognize right away is the design itself. So this one arm razor blade. It's certainly not something that GEC invented. It's been around for a long, long time and different companies have done it. Um, Case, you know, several different other companies. But not a lot of companies have done it recently. Really only Case and um, Queen when they were still around under the Shatt and Morgan brand. Um, but GEC did them relatively recently in 2014. And um, this knife is very similar to the GEC one arm or I think they call it Stu's Blade, um, which is what is on this knife. And one thing that you'll notice here, if you're familiar with other one-arm blades, is that this Rough Rider Reserve is kind of between the GEC and your typical one-arm knife. So your typical one-arm or razor uh, knife blade 
is barely usable to open with one hand. Um, usually this catch that allows you to do that, which how that works, it's hard to show with how I film, but basically you catch that on your pocket or you know a table, whatever, and you, you open the knife with that. And it's actually relatively easy to use when it's done right, but most knives with that, including some of the Shatton Morgans, are not very easy to use because this is relatively rounded. And then you'll see on the GEC here that it's very not rounded. And that makes it so that it's really easy to use, but it also makes it so that this can kind of jab into you when the knife is in your pocket or jab into other things in your pocket. And the Rough Rider Reserve is very similar, um, but a little bit less pointy. And it still works really well, uh, catches a little bit less securely than the, the GEC, but still works really well. And I think is clearly um, influenced by the GEC. Another thing that makes me think that is that they both have a swedge. Now, the Rough Rider Reserve has a drawn swedge, whereas the GEC has a cut swedge, but they both have the swedge, and it really does, I think, make the knife reminiscent of the GEC. Um, now, I think that it's an interesting thing for Rough Rider to do, to start to try to, like I said, I don't know that they're trying to compete with GEC directly, but at least move towards taking some of that market. Um, it's an interesting thing because I think that there are pulls from both directions. So a lot of people who like GEC are not going to like Rough Rider as long as they're made in China. I'm not one of those people. I think a lot of nice knives come from China and I don't think it's the individuals making the knives who are making the policies that a lot of people disagree with. Um, but this isn't really a discussion on the politics of it. Uh, I think that that's just something that could be a challenge for Rough Rider moving towards that market. On the other hand, um, there are a lot of people interested in GECs that have a lot of trouble getting them right now and giving them another option of interesting, unique, kind of quirky, traditional patterns like this is I think a smart move. Now, um, is this a GEC? Not quite, but it's very, very well made. Um, I was really surprised with how well made this knife is. So first of all, one of the things that a, a lot of Rough Rider knives have is gaps on the back spring. This knife does not have gaps. It has really no gaps at all. The closest thing is down here actually at the butt of the knife, which I'm not even sure those are gaps, um, but certainly no gaps up here, very tightly put together. And comparing that to another, you know, traditional manufacturer, probably the one most people know, is Case. Case knives, in my experience, almost always come with gaps. Um, it's just something that you have to get used to buying Case knives. They pretty much always come with at least some form of gaps on the back spring, like this Pocket Hunter, which was the uh, 2020 vault knife. So this really, in my experience, exceeds the fit and finish and the construction quality of most case knives that I've gotten in really ever. Um, now this is a sample size of one, but it's just what I've experienced. To go along with the gaps, um, it's relatively flush with the back spring, pretty close to what you would see on a GEC. Many GECs sit a little bit high at half stop. This one doesn't sit too high, um, and this doesn't have half stops. But, you know, you can see not 100% perfect. And so the Rough Rider, you know, being pretty close to perfect when fully open is really an impressive thing. Um, the blade has no play at all, and actually it has washers in there, which is something that neither Case nor GEC does, and it makes for a really nice action. It's a very smooth feeling action. I will say that it, it feels different than, than Gradation Cutler's action, maybe a little bit less, I guess, bouncy or, or snappy, um, but it is a very nice, smooth action, and I think part of that is those washers in there. And uh, as for the centering, the centering isn't perfect. And a lot of the knives I've seen from, you know, the Rough Rider Reserve series, especially this pattern uh, online, have not had perfect centering. You can see that it's a good bit off center. If you got a GEC like this, you might be a little bit disappointed. 
um, but it's not anywhere near touching the liners on this side. So, you know, definitely, you know, not per not perfect, but you do see off-center GEC knives. Again, just using this one as an example, um, it's not perfectly centered. It is a little bit towards the show side, and that's not super uncommon in GEC knives. Now, I would say that this is probably a little worse than you would typically see on a GEC knife centering-wise, but um pretty you know forgivable for considering it's probably about half the price of a GUC. now some people i've seen say that theirs had blade wrap i really checked a lot on mine um, i let it close hard and uh, i don't feel any blade wrap at all um, so maybe I'm, i got lucky but i don't feel any blade wrap um, and i'm happy with that because the tip sits really really low in the handle um, you're not going to have to drop the kick on this knife. So really well made. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that the shield is not pinned. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I really, really prefer to have the shield pinned. I actually asked Smoky Mountain Knife Works several times when they were announcing this series if the shields would be pinned. They kind of didn't really give me a good answer. Um, they did respond, so, you know, at least they responded, but they didn't really give me a good answer. But it turns out that they're not. Now, that, you know, if, if they're competing with GEC, yeah, GEC shields are, you know, asterisk, um, always pinned. There are some when they use a particular shields that are not pinned, but all of their normal production knives have pinned shields. But all of case knives don't have pinned shields. So, no difference there, and um, I do like the look of this shield better than most case shields. It's an arrow. It looks like a plum to me, like the to find, you know, when something is straight up and down or whatever. But it's an arrow, and Rough Rider has you know a whole history of this arrow shield on their site. A lot of people kind of were like, "Oh, why are they using an arrow when Northwoods uses an arrow shield?" But they have a whole history, and people have used arrow shields for a long, long time. I don't really care about that. Um, but I do wish that it was pinned, but turns out it's not. Speaking of pins, one, another thing that I like about this knife is that the pins, including the, um, spring pin are flush. So on GECs, the cover pins are often sunk and that's because those are spun. Um, and that is usually not the case on case knives but I'm happy to see that they did flush pins on these Rough Riders. And the pins are nicely done. There's no issues really at all with the pins on this knife. So, you know, another thing that I do like about it. Um, another thing that I like about this knife is the blade grind. So this blade is very thin, um, and that's a good thing on a pocket knife like this. You don't need a thick blade on a pocket knife. Uh, I hope that this will focus enough. Let me see if I can. So you can hopefully see there that this is a nice and thinly ground blade. And it's nice to have a thin blade like that because it's going to cut better. And I have used this knife. Now, I haven't gotten any patina yet because D2 actually doesn't patina that easily. But... Um, I have used it and it does slice really well, so I'm really happy with the grind on the knife. Speaking of the blade, um, a lot of people uh, were questioning why they would have an easy open on a one-arm knife. Well, as you can see, on the GUC they have the long pull, and that's really because you're probably not always going to use the one-arm opening method of this knife. You want to open it with two hands, like most um, traditional knives. And on this knife you have the long pull. But they chose not to put a nail nick or long pull on this knife. And with so I was having a little technical get difficulty there, but I was saying that um, I do like the easy open. And overall, I just think that this is a nice knife. Um, I haven't mentioned the covers yet. These are denim micarta. And um, some people have mentioned that they're plasticky micarta. And I do think that they feel different. They're smoother than, than GEC's micarta, I would say, um, and a lot of other micarta I've seen. But... I don't mind them. I think that they, it looks nice. It's definitely, you know, real denim micarta. And uh, I think it's a, a good looking knife. Um, so overall, I'm really happy with it. This knife uh, was $40. So significantly more than your typical Rough Rider. Um, they're typically in the 
five to 15 range, sometimes up to 20 if there's something, you know, with a special handle material, but usually in the five to 15 range. And so this is double or more the price. Um, now, it kind of in, in a way makes me appreciate Rough Riders even more than normal Rough Riders because most of the time they're pretty darn nice. Certainly for a using knife, they are very well done. Um, I do think that it's a good move for a Rough Rider. I think people are going to buy these and like them. Uh, as far as I know, at the time of filming this, they are still available, so go check them out. This one's $40, the Kayak is I think 50, and then the Whittler is I think 60. Um, but I think it's a good knife for the price. I think it's a pretty good value. And um, if it would bring the price down for them to maybe not have the microfiber, you know, cloth and the box and just have the tube, I would definitely prefer that. Um, but I think that they, that Rough Rider and Smoky Mountain Knife Works has a pretty good idea here. And I'm interested to see what they come out with next. I would like to see more different patterns rather than seeing the same patterns with different materials. Um, I'd like to see them do all kinds of different patterns on this Rough Rider Reserve series as they have done for Rough Riders Normal series. So if this is something you're interested in, definitely check it out. Um, they say that they're not doing the same exact knife over again, um, so you'll want to get one before they sell out. I do think that they'll probably go for more on the secondary market. So check them out at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I don't think that they're anywhere else. Um, usually you can get Rough Riders at other places also, but I think this Rough Rider Reserve series seems to only be at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, so check them out there. Um, let them know you heard about it here. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications so you know when I post new videos. Also check out my social media, all at Knife Thoughts, and my website, knifethoughts.com where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And as always, don't forget to go out and do good.